Welcome on in everyone. Welcome to this video on the full moon in Sagittarius, which is June 3rd or 4th, depending on where you are in the globe. And I really feel that this is an energy that has a lot to do with finding your own inner guru, <laughs> your own spiritual master, okay? And in this video, I am going to talk more about that state of becoming. Um, and we'll touch upon different topics here. We'll talk about, you know, how that is affecting us on a personal level, on an interpersonal level, right, with our relationships, and also on a transpersonal level, collectively, uh, yeah, I'll probably get into a little bit of politics and look at how the energies are expressing themselves in current events. So let's talk about this full moon. Um, I think with it in Sagittarius, it's very spiritual. And I think that in some respect, it is illuminating. Um, an imbalance maybe that many of us have within ourselves between, you know, the facts, logic versus faith, belief. Uh, because, right, the sun in Gemini is really putting a spotlight on um, the facts and truth. And so these facts that are being highlighted right now, you know, depending on where that's showing up in your chart, your natal chart, uh, with the sun and where that's transiting, I think that um, each of us in different areas of life are being forced to re-examine our beliefs against these truths that we're having to face. So with this lunar energy being a full moon, which generally indicates an ending, a culmination, a completion, a release uh, of something on an emotional level, it's quite possible that the energies are forcing you to purge something, um, maybe, again, um, a belief that just does not stack up against the facts, against the truth, um, purging some painful outcomes that have resulted in your life from choices that you've made, again, based on, it could have been blind faith, um, optimism, you know, uh, false optimism, yes, and the facts are just not stacking up, um, and maybe you had better intentions, but the outcomes are not really resulting in what you had hoped or wished for. By the way, I talked a little bit about this, this contrast of intentions versus outcomes when I put out my last video on the war on women. If you missed it, might want to check it out. Um, I've gotten some really positive feedback on it, but not a lot of reach here on this platform, probably because, you know, it's it's kind of spicy, okay? <laughs> but getting back to, um, you know, this energy that we're in the midst of right now, I think it is forcing us to accept some sober truths and understanding that freedom requires responsibility and the whole truth about living this adventure that we call life is about taking risks. It's about accepting challenges that sometimes involve us experiencing pain discomfort and having to accept failures and losses as part of this adventure and this higher learning process that we're spiritually going through in this spiritual school we call earth we call life right i think the energy is calling us to live a more spirit-led life even though yes yeah, sometimes it's painful it's uncomfortable and yeah, we do suffer losses. And sometimes we feel like, where did I go wrong? And sometimes it doesn't even make sense. Maybe you did everything right, but it still just <laughs> doesn't add up at the end of the day the way that you hoped or wished. Um, we are, I think, in this energy having to become more grounded in the reality and the truths about this reality and not in this very naive way of living. That if you're doing the right things, that everything's going to turn out right for you. Um, there's actually more nuance to this reality than that. Sometimes you are doing all the right things and stuff is still going wrong. So maybe sometimes things are falling apart and that's exactly what needs to happen. I know. Mind-blowing, right? 
at, you know, I'm, I'm 48 years old and I'm still figuring this stuff out. And it's not an easy pill to swallow. Some of y'all are getting red pilled big time. I do feel that this is a consciousness raising energy, but how do you raise your consciousness? Well, you have to first release these beliefs that are standing in the way of a higher knowing, a higher faith, a higher level of mastery, life mastery, spiritual mastery. That's how we reach that higher level. And I'll say when I was making the notes on this video, a vision came to my mind and it was of you know sifting i saw some sifting going on and this concept of refining fires came to my mind as well and i think there is an energy at play right now where people's beliefs are getting tested um, against like i said the truth and the facts and whatever withstands these refining fires is going to stand as higher knowledge so there's a lot of mutable energy right now, which is really helpful in terms of us, you know, being more open to change um, and, and adapting easier. I think it's easier for us to adapt with this energy and for others to embrace change. Plus with Jupiter, which is the ruler of Sagittarius, uh, with Jupiter conjunct the North Node and Uranus in Taurus, uh, there's probably some blessings that are coming from making these changes. So again, that's kind of, you know, you get a little bit of a reward or a carrot stick for uh, making these changes, especially if these are changes having to do with getting personal expansion, personal increase, by the way, super positive for uh, any Taurus placements you have. Like I'm a Taurus rising, although I do have to say, my gosh, I have had like an incredible appetite that's Taurus rising, it's hitting the first house, right, of your body, your sense of self, how you appear to others. So <sighs> having to like work on that appetite because my God, I wanna eat damn near everything and I'm not, I'm never full, I'm never satisfied for some reason. So, you know, like, I'll talk more about that in a moment, but uh, we have to also keep in mind when we're talking about Jupiter, that Jupiter can expand positive things, but also not so positive things like, you know, expanding that waistline. Um, so just be careful, or it's putting like a magnifying lens on um, in the North Node, in Taurus, with Uranus, it's really magnifying this issue of how you maybe need to make changes with your direction in life, and that might involve making changes in your value system or how you go after what you value. So I think on the positive note, the energy is helping us to let go of outdated beliefs um, and becoming, like I said, your own guru, your own spiritual teacher. Um, especially if you in the past are someone who was looking to other people for that guidance rather than looking within or looking above for that guidance. Um, this is about looking more uh, within rather than outside of yourself so that um, more spiritual growth can become possible. And I think, again, with a Jupiter placement there, it makes growth exponentially possible. Um, and it, as long as it's positive change, right? And it's putting you on course with your life direction. The challenge with this energy is that, yes, with growth also often comes growing pains. And needing the ability to discern truth from lies. Um, again, I mean, I think it's there with the way that the sun is in Gemini opposite of the moon in Sagittarius. So the truth is there for you to see, but we still do have a lot of lies and delusion and deception going on and confusion within people, mental fog um, with Neptune and, Pis um, Neptune and Saturn in Pisces still. So, you know, I think also part of the problem is sometimes we fall prey to deception and lies because we're believing what we want to believe. But it, so beware of that because the truth is there, but it might not be what you want to believe. And that might be what's really like catching you up. You know what I'm saying? It's you're getting caught up and tied up in that, in that type of, um, I've said before, I put out videos before about how to not be lied to. And the trick is you have to not need to be lied to. I know it sounds really simple, but you have to get to a very objective place in life where you're okay with the truth not being what you want it to be. 
Um, you have to be okay with accepting the truth, ugly and hurtful as it is. And also not getting lost in the facts and figures. There's a lot of people who cannot connect the dots right now, and that's really important. Having the ability to see the bigger picture, even after you accept the facts and figures, will like, okay, so what does that amount to? Um, it's really important to be able to connect the dots. Um, or, you know, again, like I said, not taking it personal if it's not what you want to hear, because the sun and Gemini, I think, is an energy that is helping us to see what we need to hear right now. Um, and helping us to connect the dots and see the bigger picture with the moon in Sagittarius. I honestly feel like it's an energy that is pushing out any beliefs that are not in alignment with ageless, timeless truths. The energy is bringing about a lot of themes of optimism, expansion, as I mentioned earlier, adventure, philosophy, having more of a philosophical uh, inspirational, spiritual nature, um, and pursuing more spiritual freedom. Um, there's also themes of knowledge and travel, um, whether it's going within or, you know, adventuring outside of oneself. Sagittarius is a very jovial energy. Um, I have a daughter who's a Sagittarius. She was my happiest child. I call her my lucky charm, right? Because Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, which is a planet of fortune and, and good luck and optimism and all of that stuff. But again, you know, you put that energy with the North Node. Um, I am hoping that this energy is going to help lift any heaviness that may come out of this full moon. And I got to be straight with you. When I started writing notes, on the energy, I initially thought, oh, well, you know, I think this is going to be okay. Um, and I've been hearing some other astrologers say the same, you know, but I will be straight with you that, <laughs> uh, you know, the mutable signs are probably going to be the most impacted, particularly if your natal moon is mutable, okay, which mine is Pisces, um, Gemini, Sagittarius, Virgo, okay, will be most impacted. Um, but yeah, like my, my natal moon is Pisces. And I would say also, if you've got a natal Virgo moon, um, that's probably getting squared right now. Okay. By the sun and Gemini. So if you're feeling a little disturbance in the force, which I was last night, and I'm kind of forcing myself to film this a few days before the actual full moon, because I don't know that I'm going to be doing so well. I will say, I feel that the Sagittarian Jupiterian energy is going to help us walk off some challenges a little bit easier than maybe some other full moons all right um thank god it's not a cancer full moon <laughs> yeah Woo, that's not a fun one <laughs> but i will say um yeah so it could be worse i guess is my point it could be worse um and you've got some help here mutable signs but again if you're wondering why you're maybe not walking it off as easy as some other people are why you find yourself in 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 a twilight zone in, in deep thought and heavy thinking, you know, I don't know, ruminating maybe about some things that you thought that you were over with or done with, or why is this suddenly bothering me? Like I look at this every day and it doesn't trigger me, but why now is this triggering me at this time? You know, those kind of thoughts. You really need to look at what's going on in your natal chart and how this is transiting because that's going to be very insightful. Now, I should also mention that this is a strawberry moon, which is symbolic of growth and new beginnings. So, yeah, even though we associate a full moon with an ending, a culmination, a completion, um, this strawberry moon is symbolic of um, a new beginning. So, but, you know, with every ending, there's a new beginning. So, there we go. There's the dovetail there. And I think that the energy is also going to help in revealing a new direction and a new direction may be made possible from this ending um, and helping you to make some um, important decisions where you are able to finally set off on a new adventure by completing an old one possibly even taking risks that you haven't taken before so let's talk about how this full moon in Sagittarius is impacting us on more of a personal level I think that at the time of this lunation, we need to examine our intentions more closely. It's obviously, it's not a time to set intentions. That would be for a new moon. Wait until the next new moon that's coming up, which is going to be in a couple weeks. Um, but at this time, this is 
a moment to reflect or, or re-examine um, intentions that were possibly set at the last new moon, um, which was on the 19th, May 19th with the new moon in Taurus. Okay, so um, where are you at on that now? You know, looking back last the last two weeks, um, what were those intentions that you set? Are your thoughts, words, and actions in alignment with those set intentions? And if not, why? And I'm going to say this, you know, no judgment, okay? Just, again, try to be very objective, like Sun and Gemini, super factual and objective, um, no shade thrown, right? Sometimes, even myself, when I put goals on my calendar or my, you know, tasks on my to-do list and it doesn't get done, and I keep moving it to the next day or the next week or the next day and the next week, and it's not getting done, at some point I have to sit with myself and say, okay, what's, why am I not doing this? What I keep procrastinating? Why, why am I not prioritizing this? And if I get brutally honest with myself, I may discover, you know, I actually really don't want this. I really am not willing. I don't want it bad enough. You know, my want to is not bad enough to prioritize it at this time. Or maybe if I really tune into my intuition, my intuition is telling me this is a great idea, but not right now there's something off with the timing. So try to um, be mindful of these things because, uh, you know, your actions are really showing the truth about what you value. Sometimes we say we value certain things, but if there's no follow through, what's actually going on there? Just be honest with yourself and maybe it's a time to recalibrate, okay? Um, also, with the video that I put out for the last New Men and Taurus on the 19th, I talked about how the Taurus energy w was pushing us to practice more um, pleasure, more enjoyment in life. And so if you look at these two lunations in Sagittarius and Taurus, I think you will see this theme, this carryover of simple pleasures versus expansive pleasures. And I feel personally for me that Spirit's been dealing with me on you know, snapping out of this kind of compulsory uh, doing that I do, being a Taurus rising and a Mars and Capricorn, having two Capricorn parents, it's just hammer, 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 like, <laughs> why, why, why? Because you have to, because you're supposed to, because, you know, why? Because I need to clear clear my conscience that I tried, I did it, I, what, what if it is not what you're supposed to be doing right now? You know, just, I don't know, just a thought. <laughs> Um, and I feel like Spirit was saying, get out of this compulsory doing and get more into um, voluntarily being, right? It's a voluntary being versus a compulsory doing um, and savoring the moments, right? And I feel like also another thing that I've been shown in my quiet time with Spirit is this looking at my life in the now, okay, versus how will I look at it in the future, like if in the future I were to look back at this current time, um, what would I wish I'd done? Like I look back and say, oh, I wish I would have done X, Y, Z when I was living there or over in that area or around those people or going to this, you know, whatever, fill in the blank, okay? What is it that you could be doing with your life right now to more fully enjoy the moment that you're currently in? Um, for me, I'm going to go, you know, soak up the sun um, in a riverbed that's nearby. I'm going to take in some vast sights by hiking a nearby hilltop that I like to look at as a mountain because I'm from Houston. Everything's flat out there. So to me, what's out here, the hills are like mountains to me. But um, yeah, and I'm going to, you know, pack a little picnic with food that I can savor. You know, even when I'm just craving, like, I don't know why I've been craving, like, food a lot. Like, I'm I probably, again, because of Jupiter conjunct my Taurus rising, um, my appetite is just, like, I can't, I'm, like, I'm really struggling, you know, to rein it in. Um, so, for me to not inhale the food and to just savor it, to chew slowly, um, you know, that's... That's something that I'm, I'm doing to try to, to enjoy the moment more. And so, you know, getting back to you and relating this back to you, what is it that you're willing to do with your life at this time to enjoy it more fully? And also, what truth are you willing to face about how you exercise your own personal freedom and how you go about getting your own 
expansion in life. What goals, values, and life direction are you pursuing and how? Are you doing it the way that you want it to be done? The way your ego says, the way that culture says? Or are you doing it the way that it has to be done? The way things are now, currently. And again, I think this is something that many of us are weighing out. I know myself included, um, having to realize that how we've gone after certain things in life, pursuing certain values, maybe they haven't changed, but you gotta change how you go after it, you know? Because perhaps what used to work no longer does, or you're realizing, you know what, that never actually worked. It never worked. <laughs> um, and, and and I had a eureka moment, my God, because this is, this, this lunation is like almost conjunct my North Node and Neptune in Sagittarius in my seventh house. So, <laughs> lot of reality checks, okay, about how I have gone off trying to partner with the wrong people, um, been very disillusioned and in, you know, where these partnerships would take me in life. And I'm having to let go of it, that it's what I value in partnership, um, what I idealize in partnership, some people just simply cannot deliver. And so I'm having to look at a different way to go about getting, um, going after those ideals. And for you, you may find again with Uranus being here uh, and, you know, near this, this placement, of Jupiter and the North Node, that getting what you want is going to require something different out of you, and maybe an unconventional or untraditional approach, something totally out of left field, out of the box, that is going to require a different way of thinking at bare minimum. Okay, so let's talk about how this energy is impacting relationships. I do feel that relationship or relational awareness is increasing right now, especially if you're really tuning into it. Um, yes, self-awareness, but also relational awareness. Self implies others, so you kind of almost can't do one without the other, right? And I think that also uh, this is in terms of doing relationships in more of a spirit-led way, living more of a spirit-led life, being, like I said before, more adventurous, um, learning, communicating, traveling, sharing experiences, these learning experiences with others. And I feel also that as we get deeper into the year, deeper into retrogrades, um, many people's personal struggles are probably going to become more internalized rather than expressed outwardly. And it brings me to that quote about um, you never know what people are going through in their private lives. So yeah, be gentle with them. And uh, ironically, I, you know, in, rec in a recent video, you know, on the war on women was saying, you know, we got to drop this, this uh, kindness cult. Okay. Um, I do feel like you, you know, we've got to balance the speaking the truth in love, you know. Um, but unfortunately, this, how we are arriving at the truth about our relationships and ourselves is maybe coming through some sober reality checks about misalignments in these relationships. Coming to the realization of misaligned values, um, I think that's becoming a lot more magnified with the North Node, Jupiter, and Taurus. And I've been talking about this for months, really, actually since Jupiter went into Taurus. Well, ever since we got into Taurus energy, I should say. Um, it's been pushing us to adjust how we show up in these relationships or just changing who we're in relationship with really. Um, and having, I think it comes first from a place of having to consider what you need versus what other people need in order 
for value to be added into one another's life. Like, do I have something you need? Do you have something I need? You know, how do we make this an exchange that is beneficial to both parties? Yet, I think there's some circumstances going on in the lives of a lot of people right now where they're becoming painfully aware that, you know, it's kind of like the saying, you can't get blood from a turnip or they don't have the tools in the shed. It's not really necessarily that it's anything personal or intentional. Um, you might just be on different life paths. And it's not necessarily that anybody's right or wrong. It, it just is. So let's talk about these transits. And let me say that coming into June, I feel that most of us basically came out of the last week of May with that grand fixed cross. And that was Pluto retrograde zero degrees and Aquarius opposing Mars and Leo squaring the north node in Jupiter and, you know, in, in Taurus and the south node in Scorpio. So basically, I think that left a lot of people with this feeling, at least on an internal level, that their direction maybe was going to get challenged. And that getting expansion on what they value um, might bring about some kind of struggle. I know that, like, I wasn't having any problems again probably because Jupiter's in Taurus right now in my first house and I just feel like I'm walking on damn sunshine. <laughs> but with that Cardinal Grand Cross, I'm sorry, that Grand fi Fixed, Grand Fixed um, Cross, sorry. I did feel a little bit, because right, I mean, I Taurus and my Aquarius Sun fixed, right? And you know, if you've got Leo or Scorpio fixed, right? So you might've been felt a little bit of that energy in the undercurrent, like in the back of my head, this fear of, well, it's great now, but what if it's not always great? I mean, what, what if the rug gets pulled out from under me? Because Lord knows there's been plenty of that in this crazy wild ride of life. <laughs> and, and again, I felt like, you know, the more I was in my prayer and meditation time, I felt like spirit was like, we're taking care of it. You're not supposed to be worried about that right now. You need to enjoy the moment. And so, um, yeah, do what you're supposed to do. But um, what spirit is leading you to do, right? Going back to that living a spirit-led life, um, are you being called to attend to that right now? Um, or is that just needless worry and that you need to let go? Um, I think many of us are coming into this month of June, even if things are going well, there's an apprehensiveness about, well, for how long before this gets pulled out from under me? Um, then coming into June on the 3rd, we've got, like I said, Jupiter conjunct the North Node in Taurus. So, uh, like I've said, you know, leading up to this point in the video, it's been a tremendously blessing energy if you are Taurus, Taurus rising. Um, see where Jupiter is transiting your chart because that's where the good luck and fortune and blessings are for you. Um, but as I said before, just be careful because sometimes Jupiter enlarges, right? So, I mean, my appetite <laughs> in the first house, that's your body, right? That's, you get a Jupiter expanding that waistline. So I'm like trying to be conscious of it, right? Because if I'm not, then I'm just gonna keep shoveling food. And I'm like, God, I've never satisfied, I never feel full. So what I've been trying to do, side note for whoever this helps, is, um, you know, I've been doing my intermittent fasting. <laughs> from 9 p.m. till 2 in the afternoon the next day. And then during those few hours, those several hours that I'm eating, I'm trying to put in nutrient dense foods, um, fresh, raw, and um, healthy fats, olives, salmon, um, avocados, things like that. Um, even though there's a part of me that just wants to shovel in all the sweets and the carbs and all of that stuff that just kind of makes you puff, right? Um, <laughs> So just, uh, I, don't, I don't deny yourself, but I, yeah, indulge. Like whenever I'm not fasting, my hours that I'm not fasting, I just eat liberally and I savor my food and I enjoy it and I chew it slowly. Um, but I do try to put stuff in there that's good and that is not going to leave me feeling like I'm not satisfied. You know what I'm saying? Hence the healthy fats and the nutrient dense. So, okay, um, you know, if you were not feeling this Jupiter energy in your natal chart as a very benefic energy that it should or that we hope it does, right, um, you could feel like it's magnifying or enlarging some type of issue in your life, um, particularly having to do with where you need to be directing your actions, your energies, and how you need to be coming into alignment 
in a very practical, tangible sense and have more of a kind of get her done mentality. And I want to remind you that the next um, lunation is going to be in Gemini. <laughs> so that's going to be interesting um, where hopefully we come out of this time frame making some peace with the truth and the facts and the sober realities and we get a new beginning on those things two weeks from now okay on the 5th of june we've got venus moving into leo out of cancer until the 8th of october okay so i do feel like this is i'm actually digging this energy um it's probably going to make people a lot more bold in matters of the heart and concerning what they value again um and less on the insecurity end of it um which frankly i you know venus is very about a uh, venus and cancer is very about protecting and maintaining security and sometimes at all costs and I'm not, you know, there's some great things about Venus and Cancer, but some not, all right, we could say that about any of the signs, okay? Um, there's a shadow aspect to everything, but um, I'm, I'm honestly loving the Venus and Leo vibe that we're moving into earlier in this month, and then on the 11th, Mercury and Gemini until the 26th, so for a good solid two weeks there, as we're going into that um, new moon in Gemini, where... It's a lot of energy, I think, helping us to sort through the facts and separate them from the fiction. You know, helping us to be logical, to be discerning, to rightly divide the truth. And also on the 11th, we've got Pluto retrograde in Capricorn um, coming in from Aquarius. So um, Pluto's not going to go direct again until October. So again, this is energy where we're coming into increasingly retrograde energy where there's this inward people going inward or feeling like they're having trouble getting traction and getting forward movement. And with Pluto in Aquarius, um, right, we just had a taste of it a little bit this starting March of this year, right? And it's dipping back out of Aquarius and it won't come back into Aquarius until January of next year. So, and then it'll be there for in Aquarius for like another 19 years. So, um, I'm just going to say overall, this is a very, uh, June, in my opinion, is probably going to be a very cerebral mental month, okay? Um, where people are going through a lot of change having to do with discerning when to follow the rules and when to break them. Because that's the difference between Aquarius and Capricorn. And I, I, I think I can say that with my Aquarius stellium in the 10th house, which is very Capricornian and being raised by two Capricorn parents. I, and I got a Mars in Capricorn too. So I think I can say the difference between these two energies is that Capricorn energy is kind of status quo, keeping up appearances, don't upset the apple cart. So it's more of a following the rules, submitting to authority at all costs, doing what you're told because that's the way it's always been done. Whereas Aquarius, well, we could do that because we're also, we're co-ruled by Saturn. You know, Saturn is a ruler of Capricorn. We can, we could do that, but we're also co-ruled by Uranus, which is rebellion. We know how to break the rules and we know how to follow them. So I do believe this this um, Aquarius Capricorn energy is bringing some contrast of blind obedience versus civil disobedience, non-compliance, okay? And understanding the proper use and the improper use of authority, basically the abuse of authority. And at what point do you step into your personal authority? your personal autonomy. At what point do you do that? So when Pluto goes back into, it dips back into Capricorn for the remainder of this year, there will be one last moment for humanity to revisit or rethink of the themes that occurred when Saturn was, when Pluto was last in Capricorn, which was, um, November 2008 to uh, March of 2023. 
And this energy of it dipping, Pluto dipping back into Capricorn is allowing us to integrate. It's giving us some um, space, some time and space to integrate any outstanding lessons from that time frame. It's also bringing about a restructuring, probably more on an internal level or a behind the scenes level about uh, issues having to do with corporatism, elitism, government, governance, and being taken to task on that, especially during the months of June, July, December, January. Um, be aware that probably people in authority, government institutions, um, corporations, mega corporations um, are going to try yet again, as we saw in 2020 and 2021, will try yet again to subject the population. And this will probably, I would think, be the final death throes. Uh, but at this point, these are weak attempts at them regaining power because there's been a lot of awakening since 2020, 2021, am I right? Um, and the gaslighting that was going on on a global scale, people have now become familiar and can recognize it and they're not going to probably, hopefully, not fall for it again. Now, now granted, there are some people who will follow authority right off a cliff, okay? <laughs> um, and But those of us who are stronger, because we, either the mind is stronger, we can discern these things, or we have more... Um, more strength of character to endure uh, the gaslighting from friends and family that maybe some people can't, right? Some people knew better, but they caved in 2020, uh, 2020, 2021, because they could not deal with pressure, peer pressure. Um, those of us who can withstand the peer pressure and who have the sharpness of mind and the strength of will in your character, I mean, we, we would, just the pushback will be there probably more than ever before. Like, I was awake in 2020. I knew what was going on, but a lot of people did not. So I would speak the truth and I would live my truth, but, you know, I even had some people buck on me that knew the truth too, and they were like, yeah, just, you know, stop making waves. <laughs> but now, now people are like oh hell yeah i'm making waves <laughs> i just think it's gonna be weak all right i i mean just get ready for it get ready for them to you know pull out whatever's left in their arsenal but yet at the same time this energy of pluto going back into capricorn is just sandwiched between pluto having gone into aquarius empowering the people and it going back into Aquarius at the first of next year for the next 19 years or so. Um, next year is gonna be a year full of power to the people, right? So it's like you can run, but you can't hide. And I think that they're going to um, do whatever it takes, but I, I just think, you know, time's up, time's up, okay? Now, moving on to the 17th of June, we've got Saturn retrograde in Pisces until November 4th. and at this time is when we're also having that new moon in Gemini. Okay, so I want you to think back to March of this year. What lessons started challenging you at that time? Um, were there some reality checks that were coming up um, for you at that moment with your beliefs, um, with your boundaries, with your health, whether it's spiritual health or physical health? Where have you felt trapped in your life, powerless in your life? How have you witnessed your own faith being tried and, and tested? Where have you avoided personal responsibility or engaged, indulged in escapism from reality um, because you were just coping with reality rather than resolving it? Wherever Saturn is transiting your chart is gonna reveal that area of life that is being challenged right now. And so, you know, I think the question is, um, how can you rise to the challenge? How can you get out of victim, a victim role in your life? Um, how can you take your power back? And I say that with all compassion in the world because I know there have legitimately been a lot of people victimized, particularly over the last three years, okay? Uh, 
but this is about transmuting that pain into power. It is about taking your power back. And yet again, I'm going to say that 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 new moon in Gemini that's coming up on the 17th of this month is impacting mutable signs yet again. Um, they'll probably be the most challenged uh, to accept more responsibility at that time. And um, those particularly who have Pisces placements, sun, moon, rising, um, with Saturn and Pisces uh, going retrograde, they're probably dealing with some pretty intense uh, karmic cycles right now and around the time, yeah, 17th and onward but inter actually the energies emanate so you probably already know what i'm talking about but it could be a very frustrating time for a lot of people because with all these retrogrades starting to rack up in addition to this particular one um you may feel like it's hard to get progress or the progress is just going maybe a little bit too slow i, I don't know i'm hearing something about mind numbingly slow okay so a positive use of this of the retrograde energy is to use some time to reflect and assimilate the lesson of, of, of Saturn and again we're talking about beliefs when we're talking about Saturn in Pisces we're talking I mean honestly all the Sagittarian all the Pisces so super spiritual really um, you've got layer upon layer here of the energy asking you to test your beliefs i'll talk more about the astrology for the remainder of the month when we get into um that new moon in gemini around the 17th and if you want to make sure that you're notified when that video comes out make sure you subscribed and activated the bell for notifications all right up next we have as i said before the new moon in gemini on june 17th and i think this is going to give us a lot of fresh insights and inspiration after you know a month of the sun in gemini and hopefully we come into this time frame more clear on what it is we want to initiate with all these new ideas and insights that are brimming um, i will talk more about the astrology at that time you know we have just briefly uh, let me say we have jupiter and taurus sextiling saturn retrograde in pisces so um, again more positive energy for any of you who have taurus placements um, and the sun going into cancer you know later on this month on the 21st so that's really putting a spotlight back on issues having to do with emotional security home family sense of belonging feminine mothering issues if you didn't see my war on women please see it i'm going to put the link at the end of this video um and then you know on the 26th of june we've got mercury going into cancer as well so again the, the sun is not only putting a spotlight on these issues but you know mercury as well is making us think about these issues and then neptune on the 30th of this month is going retrograde in pisces until december 6th so a lot more slowing down energy a lot of going within um, into your private world your inner world um, and looking at those kind of matters that's becoming a lot more the focus and people getting more clarity on the disillusionment in their lives i feel hopefully stepping into what i've been saying from the beginning um, more of this becoming your own guru rather than looking outside to other people who are maybe selling false optimism if not lies outright lies yeah so um with that i'm going to close out and i hope that you will join me again and very soon i will be releasing um the video that i'm working on right now on the war on men that is coming out to complement my video that I already released on the war on women so if you haven't seen it check it out right here and as soon as i'm able i guess i'll post the war on men down there okay be blessed have a great month